All right, thank you for joining me today. It is Resurrection Sunday. Um, so today, um, what is Resurrection Sunday? So as we know, um, Jesus was crucified. He died for our sins, but on the third day he was risen again. He was resurrected by the power of God. And because of this, he is now alive and he brought glory to God. He accomplished um, God's will, and that is to reconcile us through his blood, through his sacrifice, but also he's alive now. He's, he has defeated death. He has defeated sin, and he has defeated the evil one, Satan. So the resurrection is such a precious thing to celebrate um, because our king lives. Um, so that is what Resurrection Sunday is. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Jesus' resurrection and also his promise to return to us in our resurrection in eternal life when he does. So, um, yeah, so we not only have forgiveness of sins, but um, because Jesus was resurrected from death, he defeated death, conquered death once for all. So he tells us that whoever believes in him has eternal life and so we don't have to worry about you know once we die physically we will perish forever because when we believe in Jesus he will give us that eternal life um, let's read John 6 47 through 48 Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. And so Jesus also tells us that he will raise those who believe in him into life again, which is our promise of the resurrection at his return. So we'll read John 6:40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, yes, the third day Jesus was resurrected, as you can see in Mark 16, and that's just one of the, uh, one of the scriptures in the gospel that talks about Jesus' resurrection. So what does this mean? He brought glory to God in accomplishing Jehovah God's will, um, as we just discussed. And so, hallelujah, he is arisen. All right, and then in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 6, um, we also learned that there were hundreds of witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. So, it wasn't just, um, it wasn't just a, you know, myth, I guess you can say, or, the, you know, the disciples themselves were just saying that. Although, there were more than, um, well, there were 11 disciples then, so that's already 11 witnesses. But now we also find out there was hundreds of witnesses that actually saw Jesus come back from the dead. He was resurrected again. Um, so, and then Jesus' body cannot be found. We still haven't found Jesus' body. Um, and it actually, in, it even dates back in Jesus' time, um, when we read the Bible, we can see that the Romans took note that the that Jesus' body was not in the tomb anymore, and they actually even um, created a lie that it was stolen. So even Jesus' um, you know enemies or you know the people that didn't believe in Jesus, they themselves admitted that Jesus' body couldn't be found, and they didn't know what happen that's why they created that lie to, that it was stolen because they actually didn't know what happened but it was because he was resurrected and even to this day we don't find his body um there have been things that you know people have found like his uh the cloth that was wrapped around him but they haven't found his body anywhere um and so and the disciples if you think about it they were willing to suffer punishment and death even for the belief that they held that Jesus was resurrected um, so you know all of these people 
you know, wouldn't have felt so strongly to go against, you know, the, uh, the ways of the, their, their uh, government back then, if they didn't believe in it so strongly. Um, and even, I mean, in, uh, it talks about um, one of the disciples. One of the disciples didn't even believe the other disciples because he had said, unless I see Jesus myself and put my hand in his wound, I don't believe in it. But even Jesus showed himself to him and he ended up believing because Jesus showed himself resurrected. So we know Jesus is resurrected, um, and then Jesus, uh, Jesus ascends into heaven, um, and he now has ascended into heaven and staying, sitting at the right hand of God. So um, why did he go away? Why did he go back into heaven instead of staying, right? So Jesus' kingdom, as we know, is not of this world. It's actually um, with God. And when Jesus returns... His, ki his kingdom will be brought to, um, it will actually overthrow all the kingdoms of this world, all the governments and powers, and he will be the rightful and only sovereign king and lord of all. Um, but for now, and Jesus talks about this, that the evil one's coming, and we know that this world now belongs to Satan. Um, you know the wick, the wicked ways of the world it is ruled by Satan. So, um, but in saying this, Jesus completed his purpose while he was here, while he came to Earth, which was to teach us about the truth, testify the truth, as he says, um, John seventeen four through ten, uh, and also to die for our sins, of course. Um, and then it also talks about in John sixteen seven, fourteen as well as fourteen. Uh, verses 16 through 17 that he had to leave us so that we can receive Holy Spirit so um, even though he physically left us he's with us living in us through Holy Spirit but he had to ascend to heaven to give us the Holy Spirit um, which is our helper and also because now it is our turn um, until his return God wants us to to gain everlasting life so now that we have the opportunity which is Jesus to gain it it's our turn to bring that truth to as many people as possible and to everybody to have a chance to live um, in eternal goodness with God and we can read that in Matthew 28 that's just one verse um, of many that talk about Jesus I mean it talks about God wanting everybody to have the chance of eternal life but Jesus tells us Matthew 28 19 through 20 one of the last commandments he gave us was to make disciples of him so to like you are you know um, like you re you studying the Bible right here right now becoming a disciple becoming a follower of Jesus that's what we are supposed to do until he returns so we can bring as many people into eternal life as possible and then we, uh, the promise of Jesus' return and our resurrection into eternal life. So Jesus actually promises that he would return to us. And that's so comforting because we're not alone. And Jesus tells us that. I'm coming back for you, my people, you know. And also that when we die, it's nothing to be afraid of because we're going to be resurrected and be able to live forever again. Um, so there are actually a few scriptures that I want to go ahead and read, actually, to you, um, because they just bring to life these promises and these truths. Um, so we'll read John chapter 5, 28 through 29. And this is Jesus talking. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. And come forth those who have gone, I'm sorry, and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So Jesus is saying when um, when he calls us forth, we will raise into life again those who believe in Jesus. And those who do not will be raised into condemnation, having rejected life. 
through Jesus. Um, Hebrews chapter 9, 28. Actually, while we're on John, let's go ahead and go to John 14, 1 through 4. Let, and this is Jesus talking again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and, and the way you know. And he is the way. So, um, that's just so awesome to think about. <laughs> that we have a, a place prepared for us. And that he's going to return and bring that, bring us to be with him forever. I'm so excited <laughs> for that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and read Acts 24.15. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Which, and this is reflecting back on Jesus talking about those who did good resurrecting into life with him, and those um, who, you know, rejected him being res being resurrected into condemnation. So that is, there is uh, two deaths. There's our physical death. There's also going to be an eternal death, which we'll go over in another video later. But um, yeah, so we're all going to be resurrected. And those who believe in Jesus, we're going to be able to live in eternal life once he calls us forth. And then we can read Hebrews 9.28 now. Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation so yes Jesus is going to return and I'm so excited also Acts 1 9 through 11 and Daniel I'm sorry Daniel 12 verse 2 those are really good scriptures that also talk about his return and the resurrection um, so we have hope you know for life and what also does this mean? We, we have hope that um, we will be with our loved ones again because our, our loved ones in Christ, our family in Christ, are going to be resurrected and we'll be able to spend eternity with them as well. That is so wonderful. Like, so we don't have to, again, you know, going back on the hope that we find in Jesus, it goes along with the grief because we don't have, I mean, we don't have to yeah losing our loved ones there's a grief you know there but knowing that one day we'll be able to see them again we haven't lost them forever let's read first Thessalonians chapter 4 And that's going to be um, verse 13 through 17. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brother, concerning those who have fallen asleep. So when he's saying falling asleep, he's talking about being dead, you know, having died, um, having passed. And so uh, it says, um, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, I'm sorry, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we are, who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord
Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So again, there's a, there's a grief of losing those who we love in death, but death is not the will of God, and because he's defeated it, we know that we will be able to be comforted because we have that hope to be alive and even see those that we've lost again and live forever with them, with Jesus and God. Um, so that's a beautiful comforting hope and promise. Um, now in Matthew 24, 36, it's just one of a few uh, scriptures that talk about how we don't know the hour in which Jesus will return. Um, in fact, Jesus himself says that the Son doesn't know, the angels don't know, only the Father God, Jehovah knows. So um, we don't know which, when he'll return, so he tells us to stay at watch and be ready for his return. Um, so have hope. There is life after death. And there's a good ending for those who believe in Jesus, that we'll get to live with Him, our Savior, and God, the Father, forever and ever, in heaven, in, in, in paradise, and in goodness. Alright, so thank you so much for joining me today and learning about Jesus' resurrection, and also about the hope that we have for His return and our resurrection as well. Thank you and have a blessed day.